Curtains, so I look like Ben from I did one. see actually. Yeah. Phil sent me a photo <laughs> earlier this morning where he'd woken up in bed and yet his hair was like very 94. Yeah, like boy Ben band. from A1. Yeah, you know, boy another, band. I was on another level. Um, so I need like a headband, and they have they have them in Under Armour, and they're actually quite good for the gym. So that's why well, we'll just go in there. And I want a hat as well. I don't really, I don't actually want anything, but it's it's just good to get out of the house and actually do something. So when we, do you want do you want some visuals of the motorway? <laughs> wow, I'll do that see. now. I feel like whenever I film recently, it's always overcast, and for anyone who's in a different country, you'll just be like, is that all it is? I mean, it actually is quite sunny today, but. I didn't clean my wings. Let me, let me adjust this color. Sorry, everybody. Look. There, there, it looks better. Oh. oh. <laughs> I've tried to like, I've run out of juice as well. I feel like this is the longest road ever. It is. What is this road? M40. The M40. I feel like it just goes on forever. Whenever I think about Bista Village, I think about Pringles because it's on Pringle Drive. <laughs> It reminds me of Bisto gravy. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to book to eat. Oh no, it's not the half price thing at the moment, is it? No. Uh, no. 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 Um, Sadly, no. Yeah. So in the UK, you, you get. Is it half price? Yeah. Half August, price. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. To encourage people to go out and eat, they do a 50% off thing at participating restaurants. Only if you eat in. But yeah, today I don't think it. I don't think it will be. And. I can see you in the rear view, there we go. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Let me adjust. <laughs> I like this new one. <laughs> so, can you see that wasn't there before? It's like, I don't know why, it just reminds me of Thought Park. Like, yeah, it feels like. Like, you, you know Tidal Wave at Thought Park? Yes. That's what it feels like here. Oh, look, this is really... Yeah, it kind of feels like um, Disney. Disney for shopping. Yes. Yes, Disney. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, tell me this isn't the queue for the car park. No, it's the people crossing oh, the road. Oh, good. They're not wearing masks. You don't have to wear... Right, no one get annoyed. You don't have to wear a mask outside. Um, oh. In a restaurant, you don't have to wear a mask because you have to eat. So no one get so annoyed. You need to clarify the rules. Yeah, you clarify... <laughs> go, go on, you clarify. You have to wear a mask in a shop. Yes. But not in a restaurant. Yes. Not outside. Yeah. There's a man waving. It must be busy. That stresses me out. So in summary, masks. This guy goes. Are only in shops. Thank you. They're only they're only in shops. He's waving at me. Hi. Oh, it's busy. Oh god, I've got anxiety now. Oh no, why? Oh, because I don't like busy things. No, I don't. I'm know. like hypersensitive. We're here, and as per usual, I don't know why. <laughs> it's all. Isn't it always really windy here? It's it's if we go on the ride. Um, it feels like it. <laughs> so here we go. Should we try and find a restaurant? Oh, what's this? Oh. Mm. Tea cups. It smells funny, right? Oh, what's that smell? 
No, I need to eat. It's always windy here. I, every single time, every time I come here. I said to David, do you want to come to Bista Village? He was like, no, it's always cold and windy. It doesn't matter what time of year you go. It's like Disneyland, isn't it? It's very strange. Look really pale. I'm trying to adjust this. It's a bit bad. Yeah, no, I just so um What are you doing? <laughs> We've just made it into a restaurant so the the thing that we realised, you don't actually have to download an app, but to get into a, like a restaurant or any shops that have got a queue, like there are shops here that are really busy, there's like Christian Louboutin and the queue there's huge. So in that case, you have to take a photo of the QR code outside every shop and then like an, a near, near, what's it called? An N, N, NFC, NFC code, near field. Thing pops up and then you've got to join a queue. So we've been waiting about 40 minutes <laughs> and we're so hungry. First of all, I need a Diet Coke very urgently. Um, I might have a wine. Is that wine? No. Do it. Why not? Yeah, they've got salads. Insalada con carne. I didn't film my food. Phil's got a burger. I've got vegan a vegan burger. Vegan burger. Go on, Phil, touch touch that again. <laughs> Phil, touch that. It's like molten. It's so hot. Molten hot. Hang on, let me do what they do on the what? Price is Right, oh, you know, on. when they go like this. You could win all of this. I can't touch it, it's too hard. You've got a good shot. I do, yeah. No, no, go for it, go for it. I'm zooming. The filter didn't work. <laughs> there's bits and, it's, and, and it didn't zoom properly. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a coffee. I don't know what that is. No, hang on. Why have they given you that when the tea leaves are in there? Oh no, you pour the tea through that strainer. I don't know what the bit underneath it is though. Oh, I think it's a pan. Oh my god, that looks so strong. I got a chocolate. I got a chocolate. Look. You didn't. Vegan. What's this tiny glass of water for? I think it's to clean your spoon, isn't it? Oh, maybe. We've just spent... <laughs> don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> um, I've, we've just finished eating and it's like 4.30 now. Is and I'm it? not going to want... David's at home and he's making a barbecue for when we get back and I've just got a feeling we're going to get back and not want any of it. Anyway, walk to the furthest point here and we're going to walk through. D did you want to go anywhere? Um... I'm going to start over here first because I really wanted to go in Holland and Cooper. I can't actually remember why I wanted to go in here, but back um, in the winter there was something that I liked. And I was like, oh, I have to go at Bista Village. Now, Phil, it is your job to get some covert footage. Covid footage. Covid footage. I'm handing the camera over I can't to do you. It with the camera. All right, can you do it on your phone? phone. Thank you. It wasn't really possible to film and talk in the shops that we went into because it just looked too obvious really. But to give you a bit of an idea on this store, so it's called Holland Cooper. It's a UK based brand from what I know. And the style in here, they've got kind of quite a lot of Balmain inspired jumpers and blazers, but it's wool quality um, and it's like horsey style. Now what I, so I went in here because I've been looking at this coat which online is about four or five hundred pounds and I was quite disappointed when I saw it because it, as you can see it really lacked structure, it was, the wool was not good quality and it was still really quite expensive so I didn't end up buying anything. Now I was thinking about going in here but I don't actually need any more shoes but for anyone 
see today there's an additional 20% off the prices in here. I would go in, but I just don't need any shoes. I need shoes like I need a hole in the head right now. We've decided to come now into Yves Saint Laurent and see what they have. It's quite a nice bag. Mr. Village can be hit and miss, but one store that I've always found has been pretty consistently actually okay there has been Yves Saint Laurent. They're, so the prices in the stores are roughly around about 50% off what you would pay in a retail store. And some stores on certain days have promotions where there's additional money off. So there might be an additional 20% off the already 50% discounted prices. I'm trying to show you some prices here, by the way. Had to be covert because we couldn't really film and talk. I think the reason why Yves Saint Laurent is such a good store to go into there, and really it's the only one worth going in, in my opinion, is because Yves Saint Laurent, their bags are so, um, oh, what's the word? They're so kind of classic, really. And there's uh, there are some in here that I'd never seen before in kind of quirky styles, but you've got Sac Du Jour here. I, I've also saw that you can get the, um, you know, the pouches that look like the Chanel O case. They've got those, they've got the camera bag. They've got a lot of stuff actually, which is from their kind of regular current line. We're heading into Dior. The queue here was huge, but now it's gone down. It was absolutely not possible to film and talk in Dior. We had a security guard on our tail, so I'm just gonna verbally give you a bit of an overview. In Dior, like a lot of the stores there, it was 50% off. I found that there was a really, much greater choice on the men's side. From the point of view of uh, ready to wear, sizes, but also designs. On the women's side, you'll see in a minute, but a lot of the designs are kind of quirky or a bit weird. Uh, but on the men's side, there was a lot of stuff that was still decent. So you've even got here, the uh, spring summer 2019 Kim Jones uh, collaboration, the Cause by Dior collaboration. They had uh, oblique monogram pieces, they had, as I say, decent selection of clothing. On the women's side, I found that it was very much the opposite on the day that we went. So don't expect any bar jackets or anything kind of classic like that, unless, of course, uh, they were possibly in a, in a unique colorway. Clothing is all from spring, summer 2019. There were only two, uh, what's that called, straps, guitar straps in the store that were on offer. They were 50% off. There's also this, which is a Jadior 8 uh, cashmere uh, jumper. This was 50% off and it was down to 750 pounds, I think, but they only had one size and it was a size 46. So if you do go in there, bear that in mind. The bags that tend to be in Dior Bista Village, I always feel are a very good barometer for bags that are due to be discontinued or may even have already been discontinued. I've got some footage coming up in one moment where I quickly pan a shelf that's got some more bags on it to give you an idea of what they had in there. But there was nothing current and there was nothing classic. What do you think? Yeah. These ones? Yeah. I'll try them on. I might feel, yeah. I might feel too high on Yeah, see, see, look, look, see, stood next, <laughs> mate, you look really <laughs> tiny. No, I've never said that. <laughs> um, what lift do you up, think? Lift up the, the trouser? Yeah, because you wouldn't wear these trousers. See, so look, there's a See if you... Do you think they're nice? I like them, yeah. You just have to wear them with, like, a jean. Yeah, right? yeah. You couldn't, obviously, like, don't wear them with a comp. I'm definitely, I'm six foot in these though. Yeah, see I'm five, five foot ten. <laughs> to get my terrible hair in here. That necklace. Oh my god, this sold out in London. 300. And I would never have spent the original price on it. How much was the original? Like 700 or something Three, one, crazy. This one here? Yeah. Oh, it was 740. During these Covid times. Now for Fendi, if you ask me, as I mentioned earlier, if you are going to Bista for handbags, in my 
personal opinion, I think Yves Saint Laurent is always the best bet if you like that brand, of course, because you're going to get a good deal on something that is pretty classic. Whereas what we found in a lot of the stores is that they were selling things that are discontinued or that they're kind of they're a classic style, but in a in a, a unique colorway. So, yes. Yeah, so I think Yves Saint Laurent in Fendi. I wanted to show you what there was available on the men's side and also on the women's. And as you'll see, do you remember that? Um, was it a collaboration where they had that, they borrowed the style from Fila? There's kind of a lot of that going on. There was also, um, I'm not very good with the names of Fendi bags. I think, is that the Can You bag, possibly? They had quite a few of those uh, in, in some quite good colours. So if you're interested in those, those are really good to go for. Everything in here was 50% off. Uh, lots of uh, small leather goods. There were some clothes, but the clothes, uh, again, as you saw from that kind of gold jacket, on the day we went, that gold jacket sums up the clothes in there on that day. Everything was still quite expensive and it was quite kind of quite extra. But bags, it's worth having a look but they are in seasonal shapes and seasonal uh, colours and styles, I would say. I bought, we're going back to the car, and I bought something in Dior, and I was just saying, they don't put the logo on it. Obviously because they don't want, well, it's not good advertising, is it? Well, to be like, oh, we're Dior, you can buy our stuff. Oh, at Bista. In a, in a slash sale. Oh, okay. Well, oh, so they do in London, but they don't in Bista. Correct. Well, use, use your face mask to like hold it back in like a hairnet. And what this camera needs to go, it makes everything the light, the light, the light. makes everything look really pale. Actually, should we summarise? Summarise. Summarise. The the in in our opinion. The village looks better than the contents of items there, would you yes. say? Yes, yes. We were both looking around and we were just like... Mm, no. It looks good on the outside, it's bad on the inside. Yeah. Are we in this car park? I think we're in the further one. Uh, the person next to you has parked very close. Hey everyone, I hope that you enjoyed watching that. I, um, I'm going to show you what I bought, what it was like there, although I think from that, if I remember rightly, um, the summary that we both gave kind of sums it all up. But then I'm also going to read out some mail that you've all sent me. And for any of you who are new and you're like, what is that? It's kind of turned into this thing where lots of you write to me and then I read out your mail and I write back to you. So that's what that is. So the thing that I bought... It's from Dior. It's a pair of boots. I'm just going to do this quickly because it is what it is. It's a pair of boots. These are the boots. So they've got a small platform on them and a heel. They are suede and they're slightly above the ankle. Um, so with these, I'd seen these at the end of last year because these are from the 2019 autumn winter collection and they also came in maroon as well, I think. And I, you could get them in a knee-high boot, but also in this. And I always wanted this one in the black. But at the time, I feel like they were a £1,000, I think they were. And I kept thinking, I want to spend a £1,000 on boots. I don't love them that much. And I always thought they'd end up in the sale. And then they did, but I missed it. And then before I knew it, uh, Anne Lee, I think it was Anne Lee at Dior and Harrod said to me, they've long since gone to Bista Village. And I went there and they just happened to have them. So I thought I'd try them on. I quite like them, so I got them. These were £465. So what was in Dior and what, what um, were in the shops there? So going to Bista Village was a real last minute decision. Normally when I film videos, you see me on my own, uh, or sometimes David, my husband. I don't tend to film with my friends in the video because no one wants to be on the video and I totally understand that. But my friend Phil, he's different because he already does YouTube so he doesn't really care. And on that particular day, which I think was last Saturday from memory, we were gonna go and meet up for coffee but we just thought, let's actually do something with the whole day that's 
more interesting so we went to Bista and yeah it was fun but the stuff at Bista and I've always found this I have personally never been there and thought oh my god there's so much choice here of things that I want I don't I don't know where to start it's always been a case of two things first of all I personally find whenever I go to Bista and Bista's like a designer outlet place whenever I go there I think there is stuff here that I've never seen before and it's really average looking. And I've noticed that particularly in Gucci there. We didn't go in Gucci this time because there was a really long queue, but when I've been in there before, I walk in and I'm like, I do not remember ever seeing that item. I don't know what year it was from, but I don't remember seeing it. Uh, the other thing that I notice is that you see a lot of things that when they were in the pre, when they were in the shops the previous year, they were expensive and kind of bland or quirky or something like that. So what I was finding is that I was going there and there was either stuff that I hadn't seen before and it was there for a reason, or there was stuff that I do remember seeing this time last year, only I didn't want it then and I still don't want it now. And yeah, that's always been kind of how I found it when I, when I go there. But it's a good day out. Let's move on to mail. First is from... Estonia and uh, let's have a look at this any of you watching if you want to write I will put my PO box details below and please don't feel that you have to send me any gifts I love your letters so don't think oh I'd like to write to you but oh I need to think of something decent to post you don't just write me a letter I love your letters so the first is from Lena, who is in Estonia, and Lena sent me this lovely box, and on the front of it, it's got just something small for you that I thought you might like. I love, but I love these butterflies myself. A cute little thing to add to an outfit or a bag. I hope you like it. P.S. It's made in Estonia, so I could support local businesses that have given you joy. Oh, that's really nice. I'm pretty sure I can read this. Yes, I think I can read this. If you're going to write to me, and a lot of you do write to me, and you say, can you not read it in a video, and that's fine. If that's the case, just write on the letter, don't read in the video, and that's fine. And I'll still write back to you. There's a few things you said in this, Lena, and I've just scanned read it, and, and I was like, oh, yeah, like, that's such a good point, and I'm going to come on to it. So Lena has said that you've never written a letter before, you've got to 29 years old, and you're like, I'm just gonna do it. I know what you mean, I mean, how often do you ever write a letter? Kind of like, like write a letter, not really that often. You were saying that you saw the last mail time video I did, and you thought, I'm just gonna do it, I'm just gonna write. You've gone to explain that you're working in a school as a psychologist, and although you love your job, it can be a lot after a busy day. And you like, this I was really flattered by, you like when you come home, how watching the videos are kind of a break for you. Honestly, I'm flattered by that because I think my videos are really boring. Well, at least when I edit them anyway, I'm editing and I, I always say, David will be in the background. I'm like, who watches this? <laughs> That's just how I feel. Something that Lena has said, which I read, and I completely, it just, I, I felt it in that moment. Not the first bit, but the second bit. <laughs> so you have said that you've actually enjoyed quarantine. Don't get me wrong though, it's horrible what's going on in the world, but quarantine has given you time to kind of think. Now I hate, have hated quarantine, it's given me really bad anxiety um, at the whole kind of lock-in thing. It's kind of getting easier now. But I am completely in agreement that having that time forced upon me to not be able to go anywhere, I'm talking back in kind of March, April here, having that time forced upon me, at first I really fought against it. I was kind of quite annoyed and I, I wanted to shout out the window that I was hating every second of it. And anyone who would listen to me, I was, I was just like, I hate it. Um, but then I think I got to a plateau point with it where I had to just give it up and accept that I had no control and it was what it was. And I think, and that, that wasn't quick. That probably took uh, about two months. And then during that time, after I've, I'd kind of accepted it, I, I feel like I got 
a lot of things that I didn't know were an issue with me sorted. So for example, um, I use every single second of every single day and I don't really take a break. And I do that because I'm someone who really likes routine. And I actually had one of you write to me the other day, I think it was Bridget, I think it was your name. And you were saying, how do you get so much done in the day? And it's just the, uh, the way I am. I'm really, um, and I've always been like it, but I like to have a plan. And this is why I hated lockdown. I like to have a plan for the month, for the year, for the week, for the day. I like to know what time am I gonna get up? What, what list of things do I need to get done? Fitting in YouTube on top of it all. But one thing I was not fitting in was time for myself. And I realized that I had quite bad burnout, but I didn't realize it until I was forced to slow down. And so, yeah, I'm kind of the same as you in that it's been good from that pers perspective. And you've actually explained that for the first two weeks, you kind of did nothing. And then you thought of a lot about all sorts of things and you made peace, that's really weird, you made peace with things that were frightening you constantly, such as what will I do next? And have I made the, the right choices? And you were kind of pushing those worries away previously. Like, I don't wanna think about it, I don't wanna think about it. And then quarantine happened and you were, you were in a way forced to think about it because it's like, what else are you gonna think about? And actually in going through that, you were able to face something that you had avoided thinking about and you came up with a conclusion. You say that you are now moving country and that you think it's probably the worst time to do it, but you're gonna do it. Well, I always felt earlier this year, I just had this kind of feeling that although this was horrible, I thought this year really feels like it's a year of, um, it sounds really waffly, but it's kind of how I felt at the time. I felt like this year is a year of reflection and it's about realizing things with ourselves and then making changes to kind of improve our lives. Thank you so much for your letter, Lena. I'm gonna open what you very kindly sent me now. I'm actually gonna show you the box because for any of you in Estonia, um, what this is, you might wish to look at the brand. Is that going to focus? There we go. There is the brand there. The box is so nice. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, that's so cool. Look at this. Look, it's kind of, it's quite, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually quite thick. And it's a brooch. And not only that, I guess you can get these in different colours because it comes with this card. This butterfly is called Blue Lagoon and it says, there's kind of a message with it and it says, you take a deep breath in, close your eyes, dive into the turquoise Blue Lagoon. For a moment in the deep water, everything stays still and you feel weightless. That's how this beauty will make you feel. Even if you are working your wings off for a better tomorrow, and your next vacation is still far in the future, don't we know that? She will whisper to you of all the good times ahead, oh my gosh, and give you motivation to carry on because tomorrow is a new day. Wow, do you know something, Lena? Particularly with what everyone's going through at the moment, that is so relevant and it's such a beautiful gift, but it's so thoughtful. The next card is this, and this card's really nice, look. It's from the Victoria and Albert Museum. Dear Sophie, what I find truly unique about your channel is the complete lack of superficiality and complete extravagance usually found in the category of luxury. Um, admirably, you love luxury, but don't we all? but you don't hesitate to critique brands that show insensitivity with price increases. That candidness, I believe, truly makes you and so many others enjoy your content. I couldn't tell you how much happiness I'm filled with when you like or respond to my comments. Thank you also for this. And um, this v &A card was fitting as you're always shopping around the area. Lots of love. Mary Anna. Mary Anna, that's such a lovely card. And I, I really appreciate your feedback. And I do, I do, um, I do kind do I worry, is worry the right word? Maybe that's a bit strong, but I do sometimes worry that 
my YouTube ta my YouTube channel doesn't reflect who I really am. I'm someone who really likes luxury, but I also like loads of other things and luxury isn't my day-to-day -day life. And I kind of I'm very, always very conscious about those of you or anyone who watches. I'm very conscious about not hopefully encouraging or making feel anyone feel like oh how is it you've got those bags and I don't that's why I'm always really open about how I earn money and I I don't know I do I do kind of worry about that but then at the same time for any of you watching do know that um the videos that I do I do because it's what you guys want to watch and so um for me, I would love to talk about other stuff, but bags. <laughs> I do like them, don't get me wrong, I do like bags, but I know it's what it's what you all uh, want to watch, and so that's why I do them. But yeah, I appreciate that it, I'm, I'm grateful, no, I'm actually relieved that you feel it doesn't come off as superficial, because it's certainly not, it's just at the end of the day, it's entertainment, it's YouTube, it's a video, um, and yeah so thank you this is from leslie from germany dear sophie i hope you are safe and well i just finished watching your post lockdown harrods vlog and realized it's been ages since i last wrote to you in fact i still have your lovely letter of reply from last time and it's on in your desk drawer it's from the beginning of 2018 so safe to say it's been a while God, that has been a while hasn't it since then your channel has grown quite a bit and I'm so extremely happy for you. That's really nice. Uh, also the last time I wrote to you, I was completely consumed by my law studies as I've been non-stop since then for a few, well that was a few months ago. Fast forward two years, I graduated in March 2020 and I've started my corporate career as an attorney, I'm so, so happy for you. Throughout the past two years, and obviously for a long time prior to that, your videos, both luxury related as well as career related and personal finance, have really helped me stay sane and happy despite all of the stress and sleepless nights. I've also got to thank you for inspiring me because a few months back, I finally started my own luxury related YouTube channel You'd been contemplating sharing a YouTube channel for a while, but I never found the courage or time to actually follow it through. It's Leslie Adina. I'm now kicking myself a little for not having started a few years ago, given how saturated YouTube has become. Oh, you are so lovely. I hope you and David have a lovely summer despite not being able to travel and that you stay safe and healthy. Best from Leslie. What a lovely letter. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Um, congratulations, by the way, on graduating. Can I just apologise for how long this video might end up being? Dear Sophie, I hope you and David are staying safe during these crazy times. Of all the bloggers on YouTube, I feel that I can connect with you more than any other YouTuber out there because you have such, oh, such beautiful taste in clothes and I love getting styling ideas from your channel. From watching your channel, I've fallen more in love with Dior and I'm planning on purchasing my first Lady Dior bag for my 25th birthday. Also, how do you feel about the Chanel 19 bags? I love your input. You are the, oh, you're the ultimate girl boss that every female strives to be. What advice do you give to someone wanting to pursue a career in marketing? Thank you so much for taking the time to read this letter. Stay safe, healthy, and chic. Uh, oh yeah, P.S. You can read my letter on your channel. That's from Lauren. First of all, Lauren, not sure when your birthday is, but happy birthday for it. Chanel 19 bag, personally it's not for me. When it first came out, I did go and look at it, and if the smaller size was smaller, I think I'd consider it. But I, I use quite small bags. I know, by the way, I know it's a big junk, junk tip back here. I was, I hoovered this room earlier and I had to put everything, anyway. So for me it's too big, but I I think it's a nice combination between the boy and the classic flap. So if you like it, I think it's always a good idea. As for what advice would I give someone who wants to pursue a career in marketing? So much to say on that, because I didn't know until I kind of um, 
got on the ladder myself. It's always the way, it's really difficult when you're starting out because you go and get your education and then you go into the big world of work and you haven't got any experience, no one really wants to give you any and you just don't know what you're doing and you kind of end up learning as you go. Work out within the umbrella of marketing what it is that you want to do, what interests you. I always say don't pick a career because you think it's gonna pay, pick something that you're actually super interested in. So in within marketing, there are so many different genres within it. Uh, pick a genre that really um, is of interest to you. So you might do events or digital or TV or press or I think I've always focused on digital for like forever. Then, and if you don't know, try and go to a place where they do a bit of everything and then you can pick what you enjoy doing and what you don't. Second thing is figure out whether you want to uh, work in a marketing agency or client side. So in an, like an internal marketing department, figure out which you want to go for. And you, again, you could do both and see uh, which you prefer. So yeah, they're the two kind of things that I would suggest. Basically, it's trial and error. In my experience, it's trial and error. You try something, you're like, no, it's not for me. And then you just keep going until you kind of figure it out. This is very nice as well. I love your cards that you sent me. Oh my God. Okay, can I, can I say, can I read this? I think I can. Um, cause you've said, and so here I go telling a stranger all about my life. I hope it's not terribly weird to hear about humanity and how it can be so amazing and also so incredibly strange. Let's have a look. Hi Sophie, I've been watching your channel for a few years now and I finally got the courage to write. You always inspire me in so many ways and I found myself looking up to you. I just had my 27th birthday, happy birthday. And I often find myself feeling like I'm missing something in life. My office job isn't very fulfilling and I do have some aspirations of working for myself one day. Anyway, I hope you're doing well in these strange times. Oh, keep being awesome. Best wishes, Regina. Yeah, I know what you mean. You can go through phases where you're like, am I on the right track? And you've just got to keep figuring it out. Thank you so much for your letter. Hi, Sophie, your YouTube is a breath of fresh air and a ray of sunshine, honestly. I very much appreciate all of you. As I said earlier, I think the videos are so boring. I don't know how, if anyone's still here, I hope you and your family are all well. This COVID is really messing everything up. Pepper, so Donna has got, or had, Donna has got a doggy called Pepper. And you have said Pepper has been gone oh god oh no okay um i'll just really quickly scanned your letter so um donna had two doggies pepper and peanut and peanut died i think was it last year donna i think i remember you telling me and i can sympathize with all of my heart how painful it is to lose an animal and also i don't know how many of you feel the same but i always feel when you lose an animal that you're expected to kind of get over it quite quickly and because it's not human and actually i think sometimes with animals they're harder to get over than humans because you live with them every day and you generally tend to know whether an animal likes you or not you know it just it's a it, it's quite a pure relationship and it properly takes your heart with it when they go. So you have said that Pepper passed on the 15th of the 7th. She was in pain and suffering and nothing could be done for her. I've cried every day and night since then. When I lost Peanut, I still had Pepper, but now she's gone and I'm lost and I'm empty without her. She was my constant companion and we bonded more than ever since Peanut passed. It was a year and a half ago. I missed them so much. I loved both of them so much. I contacted three animal shelters today and they're permanently closed because of COVID, I guess. Um, it isn't doing, they're not doing any adoptions right now. Oh, for 17 years, I've had a dog. 
I'm so broken hearted. Pepper was my fur baby, my friend and my family. I'm not giving up hope. I'm going to keep on working. I've asked everyone I know to keep a lookout for me. Oh, do you know something, Donna? And for anyone watching this, please can you leave any, what, any, anything that's happened to you if you don't mind sharing it or any just words of encouragement for Donna because I think for any of us that have had pets or for any of us that have lost anyone, we all know how horrible it is. And do you know something? This is really weird, maybe. But on the occasions in my life where I've had to go through grief, either of animals or of um, humans in my life, it's just, it's like the most, I hate grief. I actually hate it. It's the one feeling on the earth I hate. And I dread having to go through it because it's just so consuming and you feel like you're getting over it and then you get to a point and you're not over it at all, like months later and you're back crying again. And it's, it's kind of, it's just a horrible, it's a horrible thing. I can completely feel you right now and you're gonna be in my thoughts. And for anyone watching this who has anything that you can say to Donna that might make her feel better. The final one, this is from Karen. Some of you may remember in the last mail time I did, Karen wrote and when COVID lockdown happened, Karen got really sick and passed out and ended up in hospital and our husband was having to do CPR and it was really bad. Now I wrote back to Karen and I was like, are you okay, kind of what happened? So Karen's written back. Dear Sophie, first of all, a big thank you for all the concentrated effort and always providing meaningful, meaningful content as well as relevant information on your YouTube channel. It means so much to me, the enthusiasm in your work also. Your question about my low blood pressure. I'm on a drug called Florinet, I think, and it helps keep the kidney, oh, it's to do with kidney sodium, which increases my blood pressure a bit more. I'm so glad that you're okay though, and that you're now on drugs to fix that. And um, yeah, you said hugs to you from Karen. Thank you so much, Karen. A very long video. I know that probably not many of you are still with me at that point, at this point. But for any of you who are, thank you so much. I always appreciate all of you for watching. And uh, I'll let you go now because I've been talking way too long. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.